Today we are going to talk about mods. We are going to talk about weapon mods, gear mods, and skill mods. Now, during my build breakdowns, I typically like to go as thorough as possible. And I will admit that I do still skip over some details within my build videos. And one of those details are my mods. Um, I typically skip over my weapon attachment mods uh, just because, and my skill mods actually, I skip over both of those quite a bit. And that's just because I use the same ones for nearly all of my weapons and skills. I never really change them and it's just due to my playstyle. Now, I'm going to explain all of these mods in these three different categories, weapon, gear, and skill mods, to my the, the best of my ability. I'm going to explain why I use them the way I do. Everybody has a different play style. We all know this. But I do get asked time and time again, what mods are you using on these skills? Why do you use these mods on your weapons? And I, I'm just trying to help explain this and then maybe... Uh, you might learn a thing or two um, and maybe adapt that to your play style. So just trying to help here. I hope uh, everyone had a great weekend and let's jump into the video. What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 video. So sit back, relax, grab that popcorn. Don't forget to hit that like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. But in today's video, we're going to go over the best mods to use right now in the Division 2 and why so i hope you enjoy now we're going to start off uh with the weapons because this might be the most uh, in depth of all of them so the weapons i typically try to stick with the same handful of uh, attachment mods the reason being is you want the best out of your mods and there's only really a few to choose from that actually benefit you in the way that you might think so we're just going to go over and let's see, we'll go over about a dozen weapons or so, and I'll just show you the mods I use and why, and then you'll start to see a common trend throughout my weapons. So right now, I have my typical PvP build, what have you. Um, it's more towards crit and multiplicatives. So what I have on my shield splinter, I have crit on my muzzle and on my optic. And then for the magazine, you have to have the plus 20 sturdy extended round. I've seen in the comments time and time again, hey, Kami, my shield splinter is only at 50 rounds. Or, hey, Kami, my shield splinter is only at 40 rounds. And it's like, what do you mean? And it's like, well, if you take the magazine attachment off, yeah, it does say 40 rounds. So you have to make sure you have that sturdy extended. That way you get up to the 60 rounds because I really do think that that made a difference for this weapon. Uh, upping the RPM and upping the magazine size really made this weapon shine, in my opinion, especially with Perfect Optimist. Having only 50 rounds and a lower RPM with Perfect Optimist, it was meh at best, but upping it to the 960, I think it's the sweet spot for this weapon. It really does shine. Now, um, if you are not to use a crit build, the only thing I would change here is I would switch the optic to weapon handling because weapon handling gives you the most benefits. If you're not gonna go crit, you need to go weapon handling. That's just gonna be my golden rule throughout these weapon attachments because weapon handling helps you in so many areas. You can see right here on my weapon handling on your uh, right side of your screen, compared to the crit hit damage and then the weapon handling, you can see it increases my accuracy, stability, reload speed, all of that. So if you're not going to go crit, definitely have weapon handling there. And then for the muzzle, if you're not going to go crit for an assault rifle, I would go accuracy for sure. Accuracy over stability, in my opinion. You want to hit your shots. And if you already know the recoil of your weapon, you don't really need to put stability on it. Putting accuracy on it will help you, you know, hopefully help you hit more shots. Okay, now, continuing on that trail of weapons, you can only change the high ends, so we have to go all the way down to our high ends. So let me just give you some more examples, that way you can see how I use this. So here's my Pyromaniac. I have crit chance on the muzzle, the underbarrel, weapon handling, and then the sturdy extended. 
So I can get accuracy, stability, you know, reload speed, all of that from that weapon handling, just the one attachment, and then the rest I'm going all crit. Now, if I want to go full tilt for crit, just switch it off to either the C79 scope or down to the rugged mini reflex. But that's really it. You're going crit or you're going weapon handling. Now, for this one, I went weapon handling probably because I already had enough crit on the build and I didn't need that extra 5%. So I probably just went for weapon handling. For the test subject, again, weapon handling. Oh, this one has accuracy. The reason being is the test subject is for skill builds. So you're not really going to want to go for crit or headshot or anything like that. You're using a skill build. So your weapon is not your main priority. Your skills are. So for your weapon, you want to hit your shots and you want to make sure um, you, know, you get bullets down range as fast as possible. So weapon handling, accuracy really helps out. Safety diff. Oh man, the safety distance. Um, so I'm testing this sucker out. I had, a, I had some people tell me to put this one together. So I did. Um, the, this build will be coming soon. But I made a safety distance laser beam build and it's ridiculous. So if you didn't know the safety distance, uh, perfect outsider, that gives you 125% optimal range and accuracy. So what I did is I put weapon handling, accuracy, and optimal range on there just to make it a little, uh, you know, even more crazy. The stability is already there. You don't need any more. So, yeah, that thing's ridiculous. However, for the apartment, the exact opposite. So crit damage, accuracy, and crit damage. The reason why I have accuracy for the underbarrel instead of crit chance is because on a SMG, it already comes with 21% crit chance. So you don't really need to add any crit chance on it at all. So you can't put a crit hit damage on here. So your only options are accuracy, stability, and then crit chance. So I go accuracy all day. And then for the magazines, always go for the plus 20 rounds. If you do not have them, you need to farm your control points and get those attachment mods. Please, make sure you get the plus 20 rounds. That is vital for your weapons. And if you're not running around with the max amount of weapons in your magazine, you're already going to be at a handicap. Now, for LMGs, uh, LMGs, a uh, little bit different here. So, for that pouch, this one's up for debate. So you could go rate of fire, you could go crit hit damage, you could go reload speed, because LMGs are so tricky. This one's just based off of your playstyle. I know people that go rate of fire because they love it, I know people that just go insane crit, and I also know people that go insane reload speeds. For me though, <laughs> I just go with the large pouch, just the added rounds, and I just, you know, go ham. Uh, for the reload speed, I just have it from the weapon handling pretty uh, mellow there and then crit chance for a shoddy uh, crit chance reload speed crit chance all day now you could go headshot or rate of fire here again it's due to your play style but for me personally I feel that the shotguns really need more reload speed so whenever I can do that I definitely go reload speed um, speaking of which uh, here is a lefty now this is typically for like raid um, incursions, legendaries, things like that. Because the lefty, you're doing a support build and you're trying to proc the perfect sledgehammer for your entire team. So what I use here is weapon handling, I go accuracy and then rate of fire. Because I wanna shoot, I wanna get more rounds down that I you know can. And that reload speed from the weapon handling is going to help, but I also get accuracy. So it kind of helps get all of my rounds together, and then I can get my stacks up or whatever I need to while proccing that perfect sledgehammer. Now going to the rock and roll, same strategy here. I'm just trying to get stacks up as fast as possible, so weapon handling and accuracy is a must. With shotguns, you want accuracy. That way you get all of those pellets in the same spot. That'll get your stacks up quicker. If you go all crit, you'll still be able to get your stacks up fast. It's just you're not going to be reloading as fast, and it's not going to be as centered as it could be. 
another shoddy. Now this one's a little bit different. The mop, I went full tilt for uh, reload speed. So this one's pretty crazy. I have weapon handling, reload speed, and then reload speed again. So this one has a 1.2 reload speed. And whenever I use this on a armor on kill build with gunner, I believe it's the third reload or the fifth reload is even quicker. And this thing looks like you're on crack. I don't know if you guys remember that old Jason uh, Statham movie where uh, he, what was it called? Was it Crank? Crank. Uh, <laughs> it's basically like that. It's like the movie Crank. Um, this weapon is ridiculous and that reload speed is amazing. Not to mention, you can see it does a million per. Psh, yeesh. All right, now we're going into more long range weapons. So I have a sniper here and a rifle for the sniper. I go for a 12 time scope. That's just my own personal, okay? You can use whatever you want. I actually do the weapon damage buff because I, I want to get those one shots. Now with this sniper in particular, I'm going for the optimal range because I'm going to be sitting back with this bad boy with the perfect de or with determined and then I'm going to use that 12 time scope. Now again, you can use whatever you want here. I mean, stability could work. Eh, maybe reload speed but I'm gonna go with the weapon damage. And then finally for a rifle, I know a lot of people love using their rifles, I just go for a laser beam, accuracy, the five rounds, and then weapon handling. Um, usually for a rifle, I'll you know whip it out with like a uh, crusader shield and then just spam it, just boom, 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 boom. And uh, weapon handling with that accuracy, it just keeps it just right there on target, just boom, boom, and it's really, really smooth. Now again, remember, all of these are just my personal preferences, okay? I'm just explaining why I use them. You can adapt these techniques to your playstyle or not. I'm just trying to help here. Now next up, we're going to talk about gear mods. Gear mods are pretty mellow, I'm not going to lie. Uh, there's only a few that you need to use. Now you do see I have a lot of them. However, you'll see that the variety is very low. So for the offensive... We're only going crit chance, crit damage, and headshot all maxed out, and that's it. That is it, all the way down. That is all you want here. Uh, my usual uh, rule whenever I'm farming for mods, like say on my PlayStation or my PC accounts, what I'll usually do is I'll keep like the ones that are maybe 0.1 or 0.2 away from max, but I will get rid of them immediately as soon as I see a max mod. Now for the defensive, again, pretty mellow. I mean, you have shock resistance, but it's only for uh, to go up against you know shock builds. So I rarely even use these mods, um, but I have a few of them right there just in case. Uh, protection from elites, I carry quite a few 12%, but that's only because I don't have any 13% on this character. Um, and I do use protection from elite builds, especially for uh, say legendaries, uh, legendary strongholds, things like that. I have several builds using protection from elite mods, and you need a lot of them. I think I have six or seven protection from elite mods on my character at all times. Uh, bleed resistance mods. I only use bleed resistance mods on like backfire builds, and even then, I rarely do that. So, just like the shock resistance, these bleed resistance mods are just collecting dust. Incoming repairs. See, this one is pretty vital. I had someone tell me about this uh, about a year or two ago, uh, whenever the catharsis first came out, like a long time ago. Let me show you. So if, here's one. So I have a catharsis build right here, yeah? And you can see my mods, two reds and a blue. Why do I have a blue? I actually run incoming repairs on the catharsis with that incoming repairs. Um, I don't remember if it was an old clan member. It, it was a long time ago when the catharsis first came out and uh, I had someone swear up and down, like put on just one incoming repairs mod. You don't have to go full tilt incoming repairs, just one and you will see a difference. And I did and sure as shit, I, I, I saw a difference. And since then I have always done that. If I'm running a catharsis, I'll have one incoming repairs mod on there just to increase that uh, that cloud heal, and you will see a difference. 
Um, but that's the only reason I will ever use a incoming repairs mod. The only reason. So I only have one of those um, in my inventory. Uh, next up, uh, armor on kill mods. Obviously, you have to have a few of those if you're going to do a armor on kill build. Um, they equate to about 5%. So if you have all max armor on kill mods, I, I'm pretty sure I remember that correctly. It's around 5% armor on kill uh, equivalency. So it's pretty nice. You want those armor on kill mods, especially for those Hunter Fury, Mop, Gunner builds. For sure. Uh, bleed resistance, again, only for backfire. Shock, only to combat the St. Elmo's and the uh, Shockwave. Armor on kill, again, I mean, you can see... It's an easy trend here. It's all the same stuff. Protection from elites for PFE build, and then more armor on kill. So that's it. I don't do disorient resistance. I don't do ensnare resistance. None of that. I mean, I'll do burn resistance um, primarily on a hazard build for sure because I see that burn is uh, the biggest, um, comp like the biggest enemy for me personally. Uh, going to utility mods, and then we'll finish up with the skill mods. Utility mods are very, very easy. It's repair skills or skill haste. That's it. I do not use skill duration at all. I'll test it out for like a turret drone build. It's okay. It's fun. Cool. But um, for realsies, just use uh, skill haste and repair skills. Those are the only ones you want to go for. And repair skills, you're only using that for a healer build. And skill haste, obviously, for all your skill builds. And that leads us to our skill mods, all right? So I've gone over the weapon mods, what I typically go for and why. I just gave you my, you know, my little lesson on gear mods and why I use those. Now let's talk about these skill mods and get you out of here. So I do not typically change my skill mods around. It's very rare and it's only for a few skills and I'll explain here in a second. But everything else, they are set mods and I never really move them, all right? So for the pulse, I go with radius and skill haste, always. The only time I ever change this is if I have the Banshee pulse. The reason being is you get these crazy mods from the gunner specialization from using the Banshee pulse. But that's it, radius, skill haste. Now, if you use any sort of different combination and you want to explain it in chat or in the comments to help others, by all means, please do so. If you swear up and down by skill duration or disorient resistance or whatever it is I'm not using, let people know why you do it and maybe that'll help you know build you know more dialogue. Um, again, this is just based off of my personal play style and I have thousands of hours in this game, obviously. So this is just a common trend that I found works best for me. Going to the decoy, I actually had one of my mods removed for some reason. That stupid change that they did lately. And then the other one, just health. But I, I only use those mods, and that's it. The decoy, it's pretty self-explanatory. Try to get max mods, put it on the decoy, and then that's it. Never touch it again. You never have to change the mods for your decoy because your decoy will never change. Trap, I never use the trap ever. I have I never use the trap. I don't use the repair trap, the shock trap, or the explosive trap. I just do not, tr you know, I don't touch them at all, period. However, for my mods, I have duration and duration. Both of them are maxed out, but again, I do not use the trap. Sticky bomb, pretty easy. Duration and damage. This is for more like a burn or a EMP. Now for, you know, like a, I don't know, explosive sticky, I might go skill haste or blast radius right here. But for the most part, I do duration and damage because I typically use the EMP or the burn sticky. And then I go damage because that's the only option I have for that one. Going down to the turrets, pretty easy. Again, I don't use the left mod because all you have is uh, mortar. And you get that mortar mod whenever you put on demo, so it doesn't matter. For the middle one, I have damage and burn, depending on which turret I use. And for the right one, I use skill haste. Going down to the hive, stem efficiency is a must for boosters. Because look, I mean, it, it is 1.6. Eh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice bump. 
And then you have healing for your healing hive, damage for your stinger hive, and then reviver armor for your reviver hive. This one you do change quite a bit because you use different hives in different situations. For the next one, stinger hive repair and then range. Um, the stinger, obviously, repair whenever you're using that one, and then range whenever you have the technician activated. And then finally, you have health and duration, but the duration will only be activated when you have technician. Going to the Kim Launcher, pretty easy again. It's either damage or heals. It's the only two. And then you want the plus one ammo. You could go for the radius, skill, haste, or duration here, but I go with the plus one ammo. It helps me so much having that plus one ammo. That's a must in my opinion. Firefly, I do not use the Firefly, but I have all these max mods for it. But again, I do not use the Firefly. Going down to the Seeker Mine, we go damage, damage, and health. Now you could go radius or skill haste right here. I've seen a lot of people do those. Um, I have the mods, but I just do the double damage and then the health. Going to the drone, uh, these top two I keep there, duration and health. I do not change those. And then the bottom mod I change depending on what drone, whether it be the defender drone, the repair drone, or the uh, striker drone. And finally, the shield uh, damage bonus. If I'm using the striker for a uh, bonk build, and then shield health if I'm using it for an actual shield. If I am only using the shield to bonk, then I want the uh, damage bonus. But for everything else, shield health. And if you're using the firewall and you want that shield health, please put on the 8%. It's a big boost from that 5 and then again, damage bonus, because I typically use it for a bonk. If not, holstered region. And then finally, shield health or deflector damage if you're using a deflector shield. All right, and that is it, everybody. I have gone over my weapon mods, what I typically use and why. My gear mods, what I typically use and why. And finally, my skill mods and why I typically use those. So I really hope that this helped. I get asked time and time again about my skill mods, my weapon mods, why I use what I use. And I, I, you know, hopefully this helps bridge that gap. Now, if you found anything helpful or informative in this video, please hit that thumbs up. Support the channel by subscribing and let me know what you think in the comments section below. And finally, shout out where you're from. It's always cool to see where everyone's from. But I'm Kamikaze Von Doom. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourself. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. All right, back to my exotic component farm.